Hello, Grovetown Library. <laughs> Hope you're having a wonderful, wonderful Thursday. Uh, we had a little bit of rain yesterday, so there you go. A little bit better than the thunderstorms we had on Tuesday, of course. Welcome to class. My name is Alex Cooper. I teach the computer classes for the Columbia County Library, the Evans, the now open Grovetown Library, yay, <laughs> and the Harlem Library as well. So, of course, while we're all at home staying safe and everything, we're do not doing our classes at the library, but we're doing them on live here. And, of course, now this is our first class that's going to be broadcast onto YouTube instead of Facebook, just to make it a little bit easier to share and everything. Uh, so, definitely uh, post a greeting for yourself in the class and say hello and stuff. Um, one of the things is with uh, YouTube, you do need to be uh, logged in to be able to post comments and do a like and stuff. So make sure that you're logged into YouTube so that you can do that. And also subscribe to our uh, Columbia County Library channel as well. So welcome, welcome. Very glad that you're here. A little bit of a side note, I am live. So the big thing about coming to a live class, of course, is that you can ask questions. Uh, feel free to post any questions in the chat. If um, it may take me, there should be a little bit of delay between you posting there. So just realize that. Let me move that down a little bit, a little better. And actually, I have two screens, so it's kind of funny because I'll be looking over to the right, which kind of looks like I'm looking at the same thing you guys are. So I hope you're having a wonderful day. So let's go ahead and let's talk about some of our upcoming classes that we have going on. The big thing I usually ask is, of course, uh, have any questions? Okay. If you have any questions, post them in the chat. Today's class, of course, is the internet and browser basics. So we're going to be covering a lot of uh, interesting information. And we're going to talk about add-ons and ad blockers and stuff as well. So Tuesday on the Columbia County Library page, we did Microsoft Word. So that video should still be up and available on the Facebook page. And yesterday on the Harlem Facebook page, we did geocaching and Munzee basics. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. It's a great activity. That video should still be up. So you can go on there and view that. It's a great outside door activity to do with family and to find geocaches and snap those Munzees, okay? And then yesterday on the Columbia County page, we did Microsoft Excel basics. Today we're doing our virtual program, Internet Browser Basics. Um, here on the Grovetown Library page woo, on Facebook and then this afternoon also this is going to be on the same YouTube channel uh, but it's also going to post it on the Evans Library Facebook as well Microsoft PowerPoint this afternoon at 2.30 okay so don't forget Excel was yesterday um, Word was on Tuesday and today finishes up our round of classes with our PowerPoint basics this is a little bit of our schedule for the month, and I'll disappear so y'all can see that. All these classes should still be available on the, the certain Facebook pages. Of course, now we're trying to post everything now on YouTube, so it'll be one channel for you to be able to go to, and I'll have that posted later. Um, next week, we're going to be doing Scratch Introduction to Basic Coding and Animation class. It's a lot of fun. And the 29th, we're going to be doing Let's Make a Game, which is a great class. On the 30th, we're going to be introduction to Reservoir Pi Computing and Project Ideas. We'll be talking about arcade machines. We're going to be talking about all kinds of stuff. Introduction to Raspberry Pi. So if you don't have one, we'll give the information about uh, where to get one and ideas as well. And I actually have a new box that came in the mail yesterday. Ooh, it's got all kinds of neat little gadgets and stuff and a new breadboard and stuff. So we'll be talking about that. Uh, also next week, we're going to be doing a gadget help hands-on uh, with uh, at 11 o'clock on Wednesday and then Thursday we're going to be do finishing up our basic computer classes with Google search and internet safety basics and something we're adding new to that class because of a request we're actually going to be adding a fake news section in there with the scam and stuff how to identify fake news so little side note our Columbia County libraries are open yay and of course our new Grovetown library has been finished and has been built too so yay uh, they're open with limited services and hours also curbside holds pickup is available so go to gchrl.org for more details also you can call into libraries for questions Monday through Friday 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. 
and please don't forget to like our Facebook pages and of course now like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. All right, so let me come back here. I'm back, yay. <laughs> so welcome, welcome to class. And let's go ahead and get started. Definitely feel free. Remember one of the big things, if you come to one of the classes live, of course, you can ask me questions and stuff. Um, I love to answer questions about stuff and we can learn something new together. Uh, but let's go ahead and let's start and get started here. So what I'm going to do is, and one of the things I actually recommend is uh, when we do any classes like this, it's kind of hands on. You may actually want to have me in a separate device so that you can hear me talking. And then you can actually uh, go in and you can um, uh, hear me talking. Then you can do the hands on stuff on the main computer. Okay. All right. So I'm actually going to post the handout. So let me do that real quick. So you can follow along with me. <laughs> Give me one second. I got to do that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm posting that in the chat. You should be able to view that. All right, let's go ahead and let's get started with our class. So my goal kind of is, is that we talk about what we're gonna do and then basically we'll do it. So I've got the handout here and I'll kind of flip back and forth. And I'll try to make it as large as I can on the screen, okay? Of course, I'll disappear when I think I'm blocking the picture in any way, okay? So today's class is Internet and Browser Basics, okay? This is kind of part of our boot camp class. We've kind of broken up into three parts here. So let's talk about what we're going to cover this afternoon, okay? So let's talk about what is the Internet, okay? We'll talk about connecting to the internet. We'll talk about internet browsers. We'll talk about web addresses. We'll talk about what is a home page. We'll talk about using the new Edge browser menu bar. So Microsoft's kind of, we won't go into that too much right in a second. Microsoft's kind of pushed a new browser called Edge. So we'll be talking about that too. So if you're still use the Internet Explorer and we'll talk about the other browsers as well but that's mainly the one that we're going to focus on we'll talk about visiting a website okay we'll talk about scrolling zoom text browser tabs changing your home page and saving favorites and bookmarks organizing favorites and bookmarks I'll give some recommendations for links and I'll also talk about some free browser add-ons, things like ad blockers uh, to give you a little bit more, you know, control over what you're seeing, okay? So before we get started, does anybody have any questions? Okay, so... Let's keep going here. So let's talk about what is the internet, okay? So basically the internet is a network of connected computers with more than 50 million people spanning the globe and that number is rising and rising constantly, okay? Basically we have browser software on our computer. It translates the internet's code so that we see the website, we see our pictures. So basically here we are at our computer, okay? We type in websites 
like uh, yahoo.com or of course google.com or something our computer or our cell phone connects up to our ISP internet service provider Comcast AT&T Wow it, then that connects that actually connects up to the internet this is kind of like the earth right here and then our computers are networked together so basically we request a website the web page is actually on a computer somewhere else they call a server it requests the web page it comes back it goes bounce 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 comes back through our ISP and it comes back to our browser the browser translates the the pictures and the videos and stuff and then of course we can see the text on our screen now the big thing about this is is it instant and I'll ask people this and a lot of people say yeah and it goes well it's kind of more like a game of Red Rover Red Rover send yahoo.com over okay so when we actually request a website we actually sit and we wait for the website to be sent a lot of the times it feels instantaneous but do realize if you are having problems if you are clicking and it seems like nothing's happening it may be because the website could be busy the internet could be slow which we're getting less becoming less and less common but it still happens <laughs> uh, used to they talked about how uh, basically uh, 5 p.m. to 9 p.m. would be the slowest time for the internet okay can you guess why ah, people are at home where now we're kind of all, everybody's at home right now people are home from work <laughs> of course we're talking about people home from work and school and stuff and that's where more people are watching uh, uh, YouTube Netflix and stuff like that so we're definitely stressing our internet during these interesting times that we live in uh, so let's talk back about kind of the late 90s okay so how do we connect to the internet let's talk about our different ways so a big one here is used to we would connect to the internet by uh, basically telephone okay through a telephone cord that was the AOL days late 90s uh, connect that way you'd hear that loud noise you know that's where it became really really more popular more understood um, about connecting to the internet good thing about this is that you could travel and as long as you could find a local access number to call then you could still get on the internet the internet that we use today of course could not go just on a telephone line um, so yeah we had to come up with something different what did they come up with next to make it faster well we came up with broadband okay an ethernet cable plugged into it looked kind of like a fatter uh, telephone line so of course if you have your laptop uh, I would say less and less laptops have the ethernet plug but still on a desktop computer you probably have one somewhere and um, it plugs in here the bigger thick cord and you can plug it right into the the modem or the router okay so we have our ethernet cable plug it into our router or modem and then what do we come up with well we we enjoyed the cord we could get on the internet fast at our house okay but then you couldn't really walk around the house too much unless you had a really long cable so has anybody had a family member that had like a uh, a 20-foot cable so they could go into the living room and go into the kitchen <laughs> I knew folks like that <laughs> you just didn't want anybody to play jump rope uh, with the cable so yeah so what did they come up with next well we came up with Wi-Fi signal next Wi-Fi signal is actually similar to a cordless phone signal okay so you could use Wi-Fi around your house a lot of folks are still dealing with uh, bad Wi-Fi uh, the biggest thing about Wi-Fi is try to have the Wi-Fi as high as you can and kind of in the middle of your busiest area okay that's the big recommendation with Wi-Fi okay try not to have refrigerators uh, microwaves stuff like that in between you and where your Wi-Fi signal is okay so we have our Wi-Fi signal now it kind of freed us around we can walk around the house we can have more devices we can connect our cell phones to Wi-Fi video game consoles all kinds of stuff don't have to worry about it as much okay so then they came up with the Wi-Fi uh, modem router <laughs> okay uh, access point so these devices are actually called more than one thing because they do more than one thing now okay the good part about this is of course you could walk around your house maybe uh, be in your yard but if you got in your car and drove down the street of course you couldn't then see anything okay
I mean, you, you lose connection is what I'm trying to say. So one of the things is, is that we wanted to be able to go in the um, drive somewhere. Okay, so let me, I'm getting ahead of myself. So basically we have Wi-Fi. So now of course we're using Wi-Fi. We're going, there's most Starbucks, most McDonald's have Wi-Fi available, okay? Um, hotels will. Uh, definitely check out a hotel before you go stay somewhere. One of the interesting things about Wi-Fi in general is you'll stay at a really cheap hotel and they'll have free Wi-Fi and then a really nice hotel and like, oh, that's $15 a day. So there you go. I always want to check your Wi-Fi uh, to see you know how much it costs before you go uh, somewhere. But a lot of coffee shops, of course, give away free Wi-Fi uh, so that you'll go there. So let's say we're getting Wi-Fi at different places. Maybe we're on vacation. Maybe we're on a business trip. We need to get on the internet to do work. There you go right there. You have your Wi-Fi. Now, the next thing is someone says, hey, I want to be able to drive down the road. I want to be able to drive down the road, of course, be on the internet and uh, be able to do work as well. Hopefully not while I'm driving, <laughs> but be able to have that accessibility. And as long as I have a connection to a cell phone, okay, as long as I have connection to a cell phone tower, then I can actually get on the internet that way. So first we had where the device is connected directly to like our laptops to like USB. And now we're st we have a newer, they, and there was like a separate device you had to get a little MiFi. We don't have to do that anymore, luckily, because our cell phones can actually act as personal hotspots, okay? So you can actually go to your cell phone, Android devices, smartphones, iPhones, and if you pay for that service, of course, and data rate supply, and I won't go into all that kind of stuff, uh, but you can turn on the personal hotspot up to five devices can connect to that Wi-Fi and then you actually have the ability to of course uh, have it anywhere and a lot of business folks do like that because they can go when they're not using a mysterious internet which I talk more about in the internet security class um, they're not using just kind of random Wi-Fi they're using their own uh, personal Wi-Fi connection okay all right, so any questions about that? Hmm. Okay, so let's go ahead to our next part. Let's talk about our internet browsers, okay? So a long time ago, internet browsers actually cost money. But luckily, because Microsoft basically fought a, uh, a court battle about it, they wanted to give away the, the, their browsers for free. So there you go right there. So that's when become, that became really important to make our browsers free, okay? So, there you go. So what comes with, if you have a program like Windows 7, Windows 8, it'll come with Internet Explorer 11. Windows 10 comes with Microsoft Edge, or and Internet Explorer 11 is still in the background somewhere. You can actually find it if you really want to. But now that they've updated stuff, Internet Explorer's symbol looks a little bit, the edge looks a little bit different. They've actually come with the swirly. now. I haven't changed the logo yet because a lot of folks' computers haven't updated. So just realize this is the new browser by Microsoft, Microsoft Edge. You could call it Internet Explorer 12 if you want to. They may not like you doing that. But it's free, it comes with Windows. If you're using a, um, a, um, a Mac, of course you're using Safari, you can download other browsers if you want to, okay? So one browser we have here is our Firefox, Mozilla Firefox. That's one of my personal favorites. Of course, there's Google Chrome as well. So we know Microsoft's a company, Google's a company. I know everybody thinks about, oh, it's just Google.com. Well, Google's a whole company, so Google Chrome is what they call their web browser, okay? So you may have gotten a bunch of alerts at one point to install that. Do they conflict with each other? No, they do not conflict with each other. You can have more than one installed at a time. And 
You can even run them at the same time if you want to, and they don't conflict, so that's okay. <laughs> Okay, so got the addresses there, install them if you want to. We're going to be talking about, of course, the one that came uh, pre-installed with our Windows, Windows 10, and now it's Microsoft Edge is the newest version of it. So because of security reasons, Microsoft doesn't want you to use the older versions because it's not being updated like it used to, of course. So let's talk about our web addresses, okay? So in the simplest forms we have right here, let's talk about our web addresses. So let's see, you see a sign, someone gives you a handout, someone says here, go to my website, it's like on a business card or something. We have some uh, addresses like www.google.com, nasa.gov, ups.com, augustaga.org. Uh, and you go, why are these, I have to say www, and why some of these I don't. Well, we're actually moving away from the www, okay? www means World Wide Web. Do you remember the, the picture of the Earth I showed you a minute ago? And it, the internet uh, connected computers all networked together, kind of looked like a big spider web? Well, we kind of use a few terminologies like that, web crawling, World Wide Web, uh, the way things or systems are kind of networked together, okay? So makes it pretty easy. All right, now what we have here is, believe it or not, when we actually type in with our browser, the real address for these businesses, the websites that you see, are basically HTTP colon forward slash forward slash. Now, later on we'll talk about what the HTTPS means, but HTTP colon forward slash forward slash uh, www.google.com, okay? Now, like I said, a lot of these businesses and stuff, we don't have to type in the www anymore, but the HTTP is actually still there. So when we type it in our address, it actually, uh, web browsers actually finish the address for us and then send us to that website, okay? Thank goodness, because if you remember kind of in the, the late 90s and stuff and the early 2000s, a lot of movies and stuff that will say, hey, go check out our website, HTTP, colon, forward slash, forward slash, whatever, okay? So it's kind of glad that we moved away from that. We can give simpler addresses, and it's great. A big thing is to, of course, connect up with our extensions, our address extensions here. So let's talk about our address extensions. Here's a little bit of a thing here, just kind of something you don't have to know by heart but it gives you a little bit of information. So we have our World Wide Web. We have our HTML markup language. So if you see HTML dot HTML or HTM at the end of a website, do you realize that that's just kind of like a doc file in Word, but for HTML code for our web browsers, okay? So let's talk about some common address extensions, okay? So, the main one, of course, is .com. So, uh, the uh, what does .com mean? Well, .com means commercial, okay? <laughs> A lot of folks will say it means company. It's kind of our most common one that we see. What about .edu, okay? .edu means education, okay? A lot of schools, universities, you'll see this. You'll see even teachers' uh, email addresses have .edu on there, college professors, stuff like that. What about uh, .gov? Okay. .gov, uh, U.S. government has that. The good thing about that, if you're looking up information about taxes, uh, Social Security, uh, if you see a dot, get your driver's license information, uh, you'll see a .gov on there. Only the U.S. government can have a .gov. And the big thing about that is you know it's coming from the horse's mouth situations, especially about taxes and stuff like that. So you and I can't just go out and buy a .gov, okay? What about a .net, okay? 
.net kind of is a hey I could not get .com was not available so <laughs> I was able to get .net so let's say that I sell antiques and I'm uh, uh, like the American picker guys I go out and I get antiques and I sell them okay so I have a business we'll say it's called Augusta Antiques so I say hey I want a website AugustaAntiques.com and I do research and come to find out that place is not available it's actually a business in Augusta Maine that not Augusta Georgia but Augusta Maine has that address okay so I can't get that address but maybe AugustaAntiques.net is available so basically it's the same first name but the extension takes you to a different website okay that's the big thing to know here now under where we have dot org dot org is usually people think about that being churches nonprofit organizations um, so dot org one negative thing about a dot org is you and I can actually buy a dot org so do realize if you're um, sending money or any kind of thing like that especially things like uh, donating money to like the Red Cross or something just make sure you're at the official websites because do realize that anyone can have a dot org okay there's many many other ones there's even like dot TV but I really still feel like our main ones uh, still are the most important the dot com dot edu dot gov but the rest of them are really trying to be specific because maybe they have run out of names <laughs> this is also one reason why you'll have uh, companies come out with uh, uh, unusual names for their businesses maybe they're trying to make sure that they of course can do international sales but also it will actually have them uh, uh, set up so that they can maybe the other name that they wanted was already taken okay all right so let's talk about other countries okay so what are the other countries extensions okay like dot JP for Japan some of these seem a little bit self-explanatory that FR dot in dot UK so let's say that you were looking up some something you're going to buy something online and then all of a sudden at the end it said hey uh, you need to pay this in pounds and you go oh no and you look at the address and it's dot something something dot um, UK and you go oh no I've accidentally stumbled upon a website um, it may be what I want it may be something handmade that I can't get any place else but do realize that uh, you may actually have to pay something like international shipping or something so you may want to check that um, to make sure now other things are uh, there's even like a Google HK for let's say Hong Kong google.com that HK takes you to the same website so sometimes you'll see name extensions for other countries like this um, and it may be so you're looking for something like a nice little bed and breakfast um, in a certain country and then you can actually look and say okay well you know that's the extension I'm looking for we're very blessed because we're con internationally connected so that we can um, you know do international business with different countries and stuff very easily through the internet and buy things too all right so keep going here let's go ahead and let's start start our browser okay uh, now you may still have the big blue E on here or you may have let me let me pull up that picture they've recently changed their logo <laughs> yeah so their logo has actually just changed so you may actually have to find this on there. Whoop, not what I wanted you to do. Hold on. Why did you do that? So this is the logo right here that's current. This kind of circle with the E. So look for that and click on that if you have that instead. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and start my browser.
Okay, mine pops up and it's kind of the, it's not really on a home page right now but they call it a home page so basically when you start your browser if you do pull up a website okay that's considered your home page a lot of folks will make that their email a lot of folks of course will make that a new site that they're interested in so they can see that first or some of our browsers now pop up and they don't really show anything <laughs> Or they'll show kind of like a holding uh, pattern so this is the Microsoft edges kind of holding website so if you scroll down here it'll have news it'll have weather okay and then the top it has a search bar now that's to encourage you to use their search engine which is Bing and we'll talk more about our search engines next week so we have our home page we can change our home page to anything that we want and we'll talk about that later okay Let's go ahead and let's talk about our menu bar. So the first page that pops up is our home page that we're on, like I just said. And let's go ahead and let's go through our different buttons. Now our first two buttons we're going to skip over right now because we haven't actually been to a website yet and that's the back button and the forward button okay those only become available when we actually go to a website remember our address bars when we click on here and then we should get our blinking cursor or if we click on our address here and everything turns blue we can actually just start typing and it'll take us to that website by hitting enter on the keyboard and we'll do that in just a minute we have a, the big circle, we have a refresh button that's on there. Let's talk about our other buttons here on the right side. Now sometimes the read view is not always there. So I've had that come and disappear um, or it's there so do realize that. Here's our add, our add favorites. So we'd actually click here to add a favorites. Uh, or bookmarks. Microsoft calls them favorites. Other ones like Firefox will call them bookmarks. I prefer the term bookmark because it makes a lot more sense. So you'll hear me kind of say both of them. So do realize that. So uh, I think the, you know, if someone says, hey, I'm going to favorite this website. But if someone says, hey, I'm going to bookmark this website, that makes a lot more sense uh, than the favorite. Also, we can click here to actually view our favorites that we have saved. So let's go ahead and let's start talking. Well, one of the things I do here is because, of course, we're doing it virtually. If we were in the classroom, I'd have this printed out. You'd have this in your hand. And, of course, we'd all have our own computers to be able to walk along. Okay. But... I'll, add, I'll cover stuff here and then I'll pull it up and I'll do it on our uh, demonstration all right so we're also going to talk about viewing our favorites and then we'll talk about our history uh, this is a feature I don't really talk much about it just allows you to kind of make little notes or doodles the only problem is when that website refreshes then it erases the doodles so I almost feel like it's it doesn't really have much of a point our share button is so that we can share a website, send it someplace else. But if you don't have um, the mail set up uh, for Windows 10, if you're using a service like Gmail or Yahoo or something for your mail and you go to those websites and it's not set up in your mail, what they used to call Outlook, then it won't really work. Uh, and then we're going to talk about our settings, okay? So let me go ahead and pull that up now. Alright, so we have our buttons. Right now we're, we can't access the back or forward button, which we'll talk about that later. This is our refresh button. Okay, it loads the page uh, very quickly. Now, most things in Windows, remember, if we hover over it, it'll give us a little bit of description of what it is. And mine's not doing that currently for some reason. But if I click here, it'll say, hey, 
you want to add this when we don't actually we're not actually at a website right now we're going to do that a little later we also have this button that shows all our favorites and I, on this browser I don't have any favorites saved this is something new I'm gonna have to research this to update our class it looks like my computer recently updated they've added something called collections but we'll have to investigate that at a different time now if you do log in it will help remember uh, certain things uh, as your user settings but the big thing is here let's go ahead and let's click the three dots and it gives us gets us to our menu okay so with our menu we can do things like tabs which we'll talk about later another way to access our favorites but we also have one called history okay so what's the big deal with history so if you actually click history it will show the websites you have recently been to or in the past you've been to as well now how could this be helpful well let's say you went and you were searching for an article or reading something and you did not add it as a favorite which we'll talk about later did not add it as a favorite and you go shoot where is that website I'm not sure I don't remember click here click history now uh, I do want to uh, say again that everything we're going to be covering today actually is universal with all the browsers even if you're using it on your phone even if you're using it on um, you know like a tablet or on a PC or on a Mac all the features we're going to talk about are basically on universal on all of those uh, one thing that's interesting too is of course there's a Mac uh, there's a Safari version uh, a browser that you can install even on an iPhone well it'll come with the iPhone but you can also install it in Windows as well and the other smaller devices you can actually install things like Firefox and you can also download the Google Chrome browser as well so we're not just talking about Windows only we're talking about universally with all that anything we cover today is listed in all those browsers okay so here's our history you go man where was that website I basically pull it up I go here I click the hit a hover or over the history where is it there hover over the history on there and then it actually I can click on there and it'll take me there immediately okay now if you do need to for for whatever reason to clear your browser history it's right there maybe you're looking up a birthday present for someone and you want to keep it a secret there's your clear your browser history okay this also includes our downloads area. So if you do want to, if you do that, if you did download some files by default, the browsers will save it to the downloads folder. We talk about that in our uh, Windows 10 class. But if you click here, it'll show you the files you've recently downloaded. Okay. We'll talk about our extensions a little bit later. But of course, here's our print, which is set up. We're going to talk about that a little bit later too. They have a newer feature, which is read aloud. I've been kind of playing around with that. But the big thing is we can go all the way down here and talk about settings. So if you click settings, it'll open up the main section and you'll have a whole lot more options. And we'll briefly talk about that a little bit later as well. So let's go ahead and let's go back to our, our, um, our handout here. So we talked about settings. We found where it said print. The main things that we wanted to change and let's continue on okay let's continue on the adventure of knowledge okay so we're going to talk about visiting a website okay now if you click on the address you don't want to click over here somewhere you want to click on the actual address in a web browser it should immediately turn blue with one click okay now what that means is because it's selected you can go ahead and start typing the address you want to go to okay so let's go ahead and do that and the, the website we're going to use as our example is rootsweb.com so click the address bar it should turn blue and then type in rootsweb.com and hit enter on the keyboard completely close it out hold on so go up here 
and I'll show that I'm gonna go ahead and because I really think this is the quickest way to go somewhere not everybody may know this so I take my mom website I take my mouse I left click on the address it turns blue and then I type in the website and then hit enter on the keyboard and of course when we look up here we can see it finished the HTTP it is HTTPS which we'll talk about later and the full address is www.rootsweb.com and it forwarded us to this now this is a part of ancestry.com but we just use this as an example a uh, little side note uh, if you come to the library of course I know that our hours are, are interesting but you can call in and set up appointment times and they'll give you more information about that um, but uh, you can actually access uh, the library's version of Roots Web from the library they also have one that you can access away but you can call the library and ask for more details okay so let's go back to our handout we went to our website our biggest thing is that we actually have our links okay so if we hover over a uh, website link to go to they're typically blue but do you realize a website designer can change the the the, uh, the link to look any color they want to so if I go here I hover over the menu if I hover over let's see there it is some blue text there you'll actually see that it changes to the hand okay now the other thing is this on the bottom left when we hover over a link oh, hold on <laughs> Well, interesting. I will have to research this. This is actually surprising. So Microsoft has actually updated the browser. So when I hover over something, it doesn't tell me the address anymore. That's really strange. Okay. I wonder why that's happening. Let's see. No, I, okay, hold on here. Hold on, why did it, okay, I don't know why it didn't do that for a minute. I thought Microsoft had changed that, which I don't know why they would. <laughs> I don't know what that was. I am dealing with two screens, so possibly it's because I had it in one area then moved it to another or something. Okay, so if we take our mouse and we hover over, we're back to uh, normal, normalcy, I guess. We take our mouse and we hover over any of the links on here. It'll change to the hand. And a big thing is it actually shows us at the bottom left where that link's going to take us. This is really your first line. Of def well, two lines of defense are, number one, make sure you type in the address correctly. So before you hit enter, validate that address because if you just typed in a few extra O's or something there could be someone else that wants to run run a spam website so if you typed in the wrong address then it would take you to that instead of the website you want to go to okay there's even businesses that spend money to buy misspelled their company name misspelled because someone when they were trying to go to their website could have misspelled it wrong and it'll still forward them to their proper website but if we hover over our second line here is if we hover over any of our links we can actually see what it is before we click it on the bottom left okay so we actually want to go to where it is the help so let's go over here and let's hover and let's click where it says help it takes us to our next page of course this is where we can search for information that we're looking for now let's talk about our back button now because we've gone to a website we actually have a back button that's available and the 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 forward button is not available but let's go up here and let's left click the back arrow it'll take us back a page and then the forward arrow is actually available all right so 
If we actually do that, then we can see that our forward button's available, and if we click that, it takes us back to the previous page we're at. So the tongue twister kind of is, you can't go forward and, unless you've gone back. <laughs> okay? All right, so let's go back to our handout. Let's talk about scrolling. So we're going to talk about all the different ways that we can scroll, okay? Now, scrolling allows us, of course, to go down the page. A lot of the things that we do on the internet, of course, is viewing pages, scrolling down pages, and then scroll clicking on something and then scrolling again. So one of the big ways that we scroll, of course, is using, whoop, and I clicked the wrong thing. One of the big things we, we use to scroll of course are our scroll bars. So I'm going to go back to our front page here. If we go over here to the right, Microsoft has kind of started doing this in general where after a while it may actually hide the scroll bars so be aware that this can happen in Word. So if we go over here to our scroll bar and we actually click our little down arrow, it allows to scroll down the page and we have an up arrow and we can tap it or we can left click hold it and it'll go faster. Another way is that we get on the bar, we left click hold, drag our mouse up and down and then we can scroll a lot faster, okay? Now, let's go back to our handout. Another way that we can do it, and I actually recommend this, is using our arrow keys, okay? So one way you can do it is just using the arrow keys on your computer uh, my keyboard actually does have the arrow keys and it actually says page up, page down. So it's a little bit of a reminder because I don't have the number keys on the right side of the keyboard. Okay. That's another way that I can, I can do that as well. Now if you do have a keyboard that does have the number keys on the right side, you can actually click the home you can actually, which will take you to the very top of the page. You can click end, which will take you to the bottom of the page, or tap P G U P or P G D N to page up or page down the pages. Okay. Now, of course, our classic way of doing it now is using our wheel, our wheel on our mouse. So a lot of folks, including myself, still prefer having a mouse even though we can do touch screen and everything and you can swipe up and down to scroll up and down but do realize that in an office environment someone working nine to five on a computer having a touch screen would really wear out your arms after a while and you still need to follow the rule of nine degrees have your elbow at a nine degree basically where you can have a mouse and move that around is still so even though a lot of folks may have a touch screen now they may not be using it because of having to put their arm up uh, to swipe up and down constantly. Okay, so whoop. let's talk about the, the, the other way that we can scroll as well. We can actually take our the two fingers and place it on the touchpad if you have a laptop with a touchpad. And I will demonstrate that. Put two fingers on the touchpad, not just one, and then move your fingers up and down, and it's an instant scroll, okay? So if one of the things that may be slowing you down is kind of fumbling with trying to find the scroll bar here on the right side, use the scroll wheel, which is probably the most predominant one. Maybe you're reading something, maybe you're typing something. Use the arrow keys, I like that a lot or you can use the touchpad, do two fingers on the touchpad, scroll up and down instantly that way. An older laptop we used to have a, a little area on the touchpad that was specifically for scrolling, but then when they came up with the multi-touch, they kind of did away with that. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's scroll down here. Let's talk about zooming our text, okay? So as we can see, our screen isn't fully, fully full, is it? <laughs> I'll say that four times real fast. Fully, fully full. So our screen is not fully, fully full. 
And if I actually go in and I actually want to zoom in, there is a menu that I can go to. Oh, this is one of those things where they move stuff around again. Yep, and then I have to search for it. Oh, there it is right there. Okay, so if I click the three dots here, we actually have our zoom in. We can hit the plus sign to zoom in and make it bigger. Or uh, we can do the minus sign to zoom out. It all depends on what you want. So I can actually zoom it in that much. And then you see now it's full screen, much easier to read. Okay. Yes, we have commercials. This is the internet, so we'll have a bunch of live commercials. How can I tell the difference between what the banner, banner ads are? One big thing is, is, I'll say most of the time, sometimes they're hidden. Looks like they're hidden right now. Let's see. Oh, it's doing that thing again. I wonder why that is. Let's see. Ah, it's like for some reason, because I clicked away and came back, it doesn't want to show the website address. Okay, yeah. So if I hover over this advertisement, now this doesn't happen all the time, but I hover over an advertisement banner, at the bottom left, it'll actually show me where it's going to take me. So if I hover there, it says it's going to take me to Google Ads uh, service.com, blah, 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 really, 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 really long address. So that means that's an advertisement. I don't want to click that. Okay. Another thing, if I scroll down here, and these should be similar. Yep. Hover there, it says something about Google Read Ads. So there you go, advertisement right there. So one, the, the defense, like I said, the first defense is typing in the right address. The second defense is to only click on where you know it's gonna take you. I do understand that using a touch screen or using an iPhone, you're not really likely to see because with the mouse you can actually hover. So be aware what you tap on um, when using one of those devices, okay? All right, so we did our zoom in, zoom out. Now, one great thing to kind of know is if you are concerned about zooming in, zooming out, now I do realize that, that uh, visual issues are for all ages, okay? So one of the things we can do is, and this is universal on all our browsers, if we hold down the control key on our keyboard, hit plus or minus, that will zoom in and zoom out as well. So let me do that. So I hold down control and I hit the plus key, zooms in, and zooms out as well okay so control plus minus the good part about that being universal is you can teach that to somebody and they won't have to fidget around which browser am I in where is that menu uh, you know the three dots I still don't really think says hey this is a menu click here uh, but yeah so that's what we're at is is little three dots but there you go right there. So hopefully you can teach that to someone else and it will not be a hindrance to them to using the computer, using their phone. And uh, also, if you are using a touch screen, you can do a pinch and zoom, which will zoom in, zoom out as well. And that includes iPhones and Android devices. The pinch and zoom. All right, so let's talk about our browser tabs, okay? Browser tabs, yay. Browser tabs are still um, relatively new to our browsers, okay? Some people may not really use them much. Uh, we will talk about them a lot in the shopping class, okay? Internet shopping. Internet shopping. In an internet shopping class, we'll talk about them a lot because, of course, I can have more than one window open at a time. Now, we're gonna actually go to our Columbia County uh, Library page. So, we're actually gonna open up a new tab. We're gonna type in Columbia County. We have to make sure there's a GA in there because there are more than one county named Columbia County, <laughs> okay? GA.gov, and then we're gonna hit Enter. And then we'll actually have two tabs open at the same time. Now, how do I flip back and forth? All we do is we're gonna click the address, okay? Do realize that a, that a little X will pop up if you hover over the title. Um, don't uh, click that, of course, unless you want to close that tab. But it's not always there, okay? But it will be there when you hover. So let's go ahead and do that together. So let's go up here, and where it says plus, the little thing will pop up and say 
a new tab. Yeah, it sure doesn't. The okay, I'm finding out interesting things. So if I actually minimize this and then come back, it will not show the hover address on the bottom left. That's really interesting. I don't know why this browser excuse me, this browser will do that. Well, let's hit the tab up here. Tab there. And let's type in www. Dot G -A dot gov. And as we're typing, it looks like it's automatically searching Bing. It's giving me a suggestion. Um, oh, that's interesting. It's automatically showing me about uh, do I need to pay the water bill online? It's like, no, I've never done it that, but it's interesting that it's automatically giving me that. So it may just give you some random suggestions while you're doing that as well. Mostly if you use that browser a lot and you have not erased the history, it should pop up and give you um, information about that too. All right, so here's our Columbia County website. A little side note, if someone is looking for a job in Columbia County, this is the, the, the website to go to for that information. Now let's talk about our different tabs. So uh, if I click here, it'll go back and forth. Very easy, click, 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 there you go. And of course, if you wanna open another one, we click the tab there. Uh, big question I get used to ask was how many tabs can we have open? Believe it or not, the tabs have become so popular uh, through, you know, through the years that we've had it, uh, that the browsers now, that's a big thing that they focus on. So they'll actually put the uh, older tabs you haven't used in a while into kind of a sleep mode. So it's not slowing down your computer in any way. So used to, I would say, probably no more than 15 or so. If it's a newer computer, you of course, you know, may not have any issues, but because our browsers keep updating, it, you may have as almost as many as you want because the browsers now to save energy will actually put the save energy to save memory will actually put the older browsers you haven't used in a while in like a sleep mode so it doesn't slow down your computer so it's kind of interesting that we've had that become more and more popular of course with our shopping class we use that to look for coupons open up a new tab and then we can go and search for coupons Again, this is so that you can have your email open, maybe listen to a YouTube uh, song in the background or something, and there you go right there. All right, so let's go ahead and let's let, hit the X right here. It'll close that tab, and then we just have the one tab open again. All right. So if you're not familiar with that, definitely get used to having tabs. Um, tabs on a smartphone are a little bit different. Uh, sometimes you have to click somewhere. On an iPhone, it, it kind of does a, a, a kind of like a fan where it fans out all the other uh, websites that you have open. A little side note too, if you do have, a, especially on like a smartphone, if you do have a bunch of programs open in the background, it can slow down your device. So we do realize that our devices kind of just stay on but you really should turn them off and on um, every few days or five days or so or a week uh, just so that there's not a program in the background hogging memory and stuff and uh, slowing your computer down for some reason. Your, your iPhone or device down for some reason. All right, let's talk about changing our home page. Okay, so we're gonna actually change our home page to uh, the google.com, okay? So I think our menu may have changed, so we'll actually have to update this because my computer automatically updates to the latest version of stuff. But this is what a lot of folks have currently with the Microsoft Edge, okay? So my browser may be newer, but your browser may be the same as my handout. But we're actually gonna change it. Uh, one easy way to do this is to go ahead and let's go to Google. I'm gonna click the address. It turns blue. So let's type in google.com. enter let's click our three dots what is that we have something else popping up okay 
it's a security thing that's popping up there. All right, so if we click here, we actually have to go to um, the settings down here. And we actually have to go to where it says startup, okay? Settings and startup. Like I said, my handout should be if you still have the 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 blue E and not the swirl. <laughs> Isn't that funny? We we're talking about the swirls and stuff. But in the in the normal way, if your computer hasn't updated probably in let's say a month, uh, then you click the, the 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 three dots, it'll come up here, click settings, and then you'll actually go to where it says start page. Okay. All right, so let's go to that. It says open a new tab. So basically that's their blank screen. If I want to be specific, I'm going to say open a specific page. And it's going to say, what do you want me to open? I'm going to say add a new page. Oh, use all open tabs. Now, what exactly does that mean? Used to it said current. So if you're familiar with doing this, uh, which I always like, do you go to the website you want to change it to? Now, right now, we only have Google as our main page. Can you have more than one home page? Yes, you can. It'll open up another tab. So let's say you wanted your email and your new site to open at the first opening up of your browser. You can do that. That's why it's saying use uh, open use all open tabs so you can do that but I just want Google to be my main one so I'm gonna say use all open tabs there it is I don't have to type it in or anything like that and the good part is I know that it's right okay okay now how do we know that it worked well let's go and close this tab and then I'm gonna close my browser and I'll restart it and it pops up and look there it is right here now the interesting thing is we used to have a little house and I believe we can actually add that house back in the settings if we want to but it's not the default and I always want to teach based on what the default is because that's what most people would have the factory settings on their computer so I won't talk about that but yes there used to be a little house that you could click and I believe in the settings you can bring it back but we won't do that because not everybody's computer will have that okay <laughs> so let's go ahead and let's scroll down and let's talk about um, saving our favorites and bookmarks okay All right, so I know this browser doesn't really have anything on it, which is good, um, but yours may be a little more busy, and that's fine too. So let's talk about saving favorites and bookmarks. So we have a website, of course, we want to save. Uh, you could write it down, but we don't want to do that, do we? No, we don't. So let's talk about uh, adding this. Uh, as a favorite, okay? So I'm gonna go to one of the really great sites. We're gonna go to cnet.com, one of our big tech sites. Lots of great tech news on here. It's similar, it's kind of like a tech blog, I guess someone would say. Lots of real tech interesting things on here. And they do recommendations of laptops and devices, which uh, I bought two devices recommended by them, and uh, they were great. So I've gone to the site, so let's go up here and I'm gonna click my star. This is a security thing that's popped up to ask me questions, so just ignore that. I'm go to the star, click there. And it pops up and says, hey, do you want to add this as a, to your favorites? Now, remember, Microsoft calls them favorites. Other companies call them bookmarks. I prefer the term bookmark, so I'll probably still say bookmark. So let's bookmark this favorite. <laughs> now, it already has an address. 
I mean, excuse me, it already has a title here, okay? Uh, which kind of is the same, it's not kind of, it is the title of the website. So if you look up here in your tab, that will be the same title. So normally, we could just go in here, it's gonna put it in the main uh, area, and I just click Done, and then I'll be able to see it in there. But one of the things that we can do that's really great is we can actually rename uh, the titles of the favorites if we want to. This will make it easier to find the favorite that we want later, okay? If I save this as Product Reviews How To, I may go, well, which one is that? I, I don't know. I actually just want it to say, uh, CNET okay so I know what the bookmark is so I could go in here and do backspace and then just have it say CNET now I'll tell you this this is just from you know saving bookmarks and then basically saying hey everybody so let's say uh, in the past I was planning a trip and it was a hotel I, w I wanted to need to find a hotel that had certain things maybe an indoor pool um, because maybe it was winter and need to have free Wi-Fi. So basically I found a bunch of hotels and I bookmarked them and I wanted to share them with family so that they could take a look and decide if they wanted to stay there or not. So one of the things was when I saved the bookmarks, I actually gave them titles like A plus or you know, the has free breakfast or something like that. So not only did I have the title of the hotel here, but I actually added little notes at the end of the book, the, the bookmark title, so I know what it was later. Now, other times, uh, no more information about it. So there's been other times where I literally could not remember <laughs> the name of a website that I wanted to go to. Maybe it had an odd name or something. So I basically would go in here and just say uh, something like A plus laptop reviews or something. Uh, you know and then ha then have the name so I actually went in and changed it before I even saved it in a minute we'll talk about reorganizing those and the big thing about that is so that you'll know which one is which I've even gone back and said a plus on something and that's a different thing as well now it actually is showing me the favorites bar which is an area that'll show up here and you can click the links pretty easily I use that a lot with my other browser, Firefox, but I'm going to go ahead and just hit done. And now when we go up here and I actually click the other star, we can actually see that it says uh, CNET and of course if I click that, it'll reload it, okay? And reload the advertisement too, which is interesting. And because I minimized it, that's so weird. See, yeah, it's like I minimize it and bring it back. Then when I hover, that disappears. That is a glitch. That is very interesting. All right, so as you can see, we can save a lot of different favorites in here. So let's talk about. We saved our 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 um, favorite there. We starred it. Let's talk about organizing our favorites or bookmarks as well, okay? Now remember, everything I'm talking about will, is universal to the browsers uh, that we discussed, but do remember that the buttons may be in different places. That's the only thing. Okay, so we're gonna click the star, and then we should see where it says Manage Favorites. Manage favorites will pop up. This is where you can reorganize them if you want to. Of course, I only have one favorite right now. This is also where you can add a new favorite or a big thing is to add a, a bookmark, excuse me, a folder on there so that you can give it new, um, new information. So we'll call it One Tech News and hit save. And I can drag this and put it in the Tech News folder and then when I go back to my favorites, I see the folder and I can I can hover it, that's cool, and then just click there and it'll take me to the tech news. So why are the folders important? Well, folders important to help keep your sanity. How about that? So after a while, you'll start saving and saving and saving tons of bookmarks, okay? 
The big thing about that is, is that it can get crazy after a while. Now, I've had it. I've had three different um, stories. I'll tell you real quick. So one of them was, a gentleman came in and said that he and his family had gone skiing three years ago, and they had. Uh, every time he uses his computer, it's about thirty bookmarks that he actually has to scroll through. Because a big list here will show up, and he has to scroll down uh, to get to you know their every day his email bookmark stuff like that. I said okay. I said, well, you could delete those. So with the manager, you can actually go in, and if I do a little checkbox here, most of the time I can right click as well, do delete that way. But if I have a little checkbox, I like that, delete. Uh, but you can delete, with the organizers, you can delete the favorites, okay? I said, well, why don't you delete them? And he goes, no, we might take that trip again, and I want to remember all the places we stayed and everything we did. And I go, okay, well, that's fine. Um, so, I said, why don't you make a new folder, add a folder, call it Ski Trip and put the year on it, and then drag all your, um, you know, links to that folder, and then it won't be in the way anymore. And he's like, that's great. That's a great idea. I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm like, okay. The other one I got was, it was husband and wife using the same computer, and it was, it was very crazy with her trying to keep up with her bookmarks. And she's a big couponer, so she has tons and tons of uh, coupon bookmarks, okay? And then his as well. So what she did was she says she spent one day and she made two folders, one with his name on it and one with her name on it, <laughs> and basically put all their favorites in the different separate folders. And she said she spent you know a few hours doing it. It was like, okay. And later, when she came back, she found that he started re-adding his favorites uh, to the main folder. Okay, so the, I have to realize the folders are kind of like uh, file cabinets. And she said, what are you doing? He said, well, I couldn't find my, my, uh, my links because you moved them around, my favorites, my bookmarks. So I had to start re-adding them. So she said, that's fine but all hers were in a folder with her name on it. So if you are using a computer with somebody else, a big, a big plus is to maybe add a folder, put your name on it, and then you can save all your bookmarks into that folder. And then even if the other people post a bunch of different bookmarks or whatever, you'll have your own area and be able to um, you know, edit what's in there and stuff, okay? So there you go right there, there's my big, uh, recommendations for bookmark uh, organization. <laughs> now, if we go down uh, to our next section, let's talk about our links, and then we'll start talking about our uh, the bookmarks. Yeah, excuse me, we're gonna talk about uh, our add-ons and which ones I recommend and stuff. So for our links, we talked about uh, different websites uh, next week. We'll talk about using uh, um, Google search and also keeping ourselves safe and secure online away from spammers and everything is one of the things we'll talk about. And also a new topic that we've been requested to add uh, by popular demand is fake news. So we'll actually have a fake news section looking up, is it a fake news um, website? How can you tell? And also looking up for spam on the ftc.gov website. So let's talk about using Google. We have Google on here, of course, Yahoo and Bing. We'll talk about those search engines next week. Well, there's Amazon, of course, the one of the most popular ones there. We have our Georgia Traveler website, and of course, the auction website like eBay. And we'll be talking about scams uh, next week, okay? It's also NASA.gov, our public library. Archive.org is a fantastic website to go to. I'll just point that one out real quick. Has lots of free, well, all the stuff on here is free, I'll say that. It's part of a nonprofit library. They have lots of free books on there, movies, software, music. Now, also, I also teach a class for the libraries called Library Resources and Apps. So definitely look out for that one. We'll probably have that. Uh, class again this coming month uh, next month 
and be aware of that. We'll talk about free eBooks, free Acorn, British TV uh, program, and indie, indie flicks. Uh, so indie flicks, stuff that you can get free through the library, movies, um, stuff like that. A uh, live concert venue. So this is a, another great res website to go to. They even have games on here too. And uh, lots of free international books. And our Google, the Google School class, we actually talk about the free books through Google as well. Okay. Old Timer Radio is right there. So this is a great resource with all kinds of stuff, videos, historical information, um, arts, music, animation, all kinds of neat stuff. Okay, so, of course, recommend Pandora Radio. It's a great place to go. There's Web uh, um, MD as well. This is a one, one, another great place to learn something. course to our library and I talk about this in the library resources class to our library you can get free the universal uh, class so that's another uh, resource this one is uh, free as well uh, but the universal class do they do uh, certificates so here you can go more advanced than what we talk about in just our little two-hour sessions some of these are very long <laughs> um, so yeah Beyond email, computer basics, basically the class we're kind of teaching today a little bit too. All right, so there's some resources there, and we talked about Ancestry.com a little bit, Roots Web, Roots Web, Roots Web. Of course, other resources, AugustaChronicle.com, and our next week we'll talk about Snoops and Truth or Fiction as well. All right, now. One big thing to do is I'll get asked this about a uh, uh, free annual credit report. The great link to go to for that is the FTC.gov, and we'll talk about FTC.gov more next week. But they actually have, if you go there, on the main area here, they'll talk about register for do not call. This is FTC.gov website. This is not some random search of do not call list. Um, this also has Consumer Alerts blog, which we'll talk about next week, and also where you can get a free credit report. You click there, and it'll actually send you to annualcreditreport.com. But that is, I show folks uh, how to get here through the FTC.gov website, so you know that it's official. It doesn't do credit scores. It's like a credit report. We talked about CNET a little bit. And now let's talk about browser extensions. Okay. This is Adblocker Plus, and you can install it on all the browsers that we've talked about. They used to have a cute little video, but apparently I don't I don't think they have the little video on here anymore. But basically the big thing about it is you see, and let me see if the about has. Yeah, this kind of explains how it works, but it's not as cute as the little video that it used to have. Anyway, so basically what does an ad blocker do? This is something that you download, you install, and it basically it'll show up in your browser over here kind of like a little stop sign, okay? There's another one um, that a lot of people use. It's called uBlock Origin. It's another one, and I'll pull that up in just a second. Anyway, so here's your web page. It has advertisement on it. Great thing about the internet, a lot of free information. Negative thing about the internet is a lot of free information has to be paid for by ads, okay? So we have our advertisement here. Um, it has a filtered list, and then it blocks those, and some websites you'll go to, and it won't even look like you have um, any information. Excuse me, you actually go to the website, and it actually turns off the, the advertisement. You may not even know it was there to begin with, okay? One negative thing about using one of these is it may pop up and say, hey, we can't show uh, you that video, we can't show you that article because you have an ad blocker on. Please disable the ad blocker. Very easy, you'll have this on the browser. You click there to turn it off. And I think I can show an, uh, an example of that real quick.
Yeah, okay. So I have another browser open in the background that I'm actually doing this uh, broadcast with. So we first went to, and I actually have, I've moved my buttons to the middle uh, in Firefox because they just seem a little bit easier than way over here on the left. So don't let that throw you. This is still Firefox. I've just customized it a little bit. So basically we have our advertisement here and we have our advertisement at the bottom. When we have the ad blocker turned on, we refresh the page, it actually does not show the advertisement anymore. And you look down here at the bottom and it looks like it was never even there, okay? So if I do need to turn it back on for whatever reason, all I do is I click here, it'll say, do you wanna turn the ad blocking off on this website? You click there, you refresh, Okay, and there's our advertisement is back, okay, for whatever reason. Um, I'm currently using one called, let's see if I can show that one real quick. Here, I'll pull it up and we'll go to the, the site for it. So, like I said, this is the other one that I recommend to. It's called uBlock Origin. You just have to search for that. It doesn't really have its own website. It's just an add-on, but it gets lists just like the other one does as well. Okay. Now, let's go ahead and let's talk about some of our other stuff. So definitely recommend those two. There's also one called Safe Web Norton. It's an extension that you can install and it actually will keep, it's like a, a blocker kind of to make sure that you're not going to any websites that list is bad. Now, I will tell you Firefox and Chrome are starting to actually have something like this built in, but if you want a little bit of extra safety, that's one way of doing it. Now, used to, we actually had to use programs like Raindrop, which I'll show that too. And one of the things it did was it actually, it's an all-in-one bookmark manager, okay? So basically you install it, it's similar to what we installed, we talked about installing the ad blocker. Okay, but what it does is it basically allows you to synchronize your bookmarks. So there was another program that uh, did this very, very well. This is another one that I found that works very well as well. Uh, the big thing about it is so you can universally back up your bookmarks and you can access them through the website as well. And it synchronizes them, okay? Now, one of the things that's happening is the browsers want you to start logging in uh, so Firefox, as long as I'm using a Firefox uh, uh, browser and I log in with the username and, and password I set up with them, they'll actually back up and synchronize my, my bookmarks that way. So I can actually have my bookmarks on my iPhone. I can actually have bookmarks on my computer. And one thing that's really cool is when I use the certain ones, I can actually tell it to synchronize it. So one of these tabs, I can actually tell it to load on like an iPhone or vice versa. 
Now, I won't get into that too much. I don't use that a ton, but it really is kind of a neat feature to be able to do that. But don't lose your bookmarks and having your bookmarks synchronized from one um, device to another or one laptop to another kind of makes it a very, um, let's see, I'm trying to think about the right word for for that. It's, it's uh, um, at one, I guess, all in one, I'll use that. All in one kind of synchronized, uh, you know, kind of together and it kind of almost feels like you're using one device, okay? Another big thing that I recommend is basically a password keeper. The password keeper I recommend is, is LastPass. The big thing with LastPass is that uh, there are, uh, it does have a free version, which I only ever use the free version. Then they have a cost version as well, but you can get LastPass, the free version. The really great part about it is that it do, never uploads in your passwords anywhere. So kind of imagine that when you start your browser, okay, it'll pop up and say, hey, what's your master uh, uh, password? You type in your master password, um, and then any of the websites you go to and you type in a username and password, the first time you go there, it'll pop up and say, hey, do you want me to remember this password? It's very, um, uh, it, it's not annoying in any way. It only does it when it thinks you're going to type in something you want to remember. Some of our browsers now, of course, will do that, but I do like, still like using the fast pass. I'm just using fast pass. <laughs> Had Disney on the brain. How about that? Last pass. Um, I feel like it's a little bit more secure and I like the features it has. It never uploads your passwords anywhere. So any device you use it on, you have to uh, retell it what the passwords are. It's all locked to that one device. Okay. So it automatically does it. It's a great password keeper. And for security, you really should have it set up so you have a master password. You can bypass that. So you just turn your computer on. You do your normal username and password. Excuse me. You do your normal password getting into your computer or you know your, your key code or whatever on your device. And then it'll automatically log you in. But for security, you really should have the master password set up. If you don't, I understand. But yeah, it'll remember all your stuff and automatically log you in, okay? It makes things a lot easier in the long run. And the really great part is it does have a vault that you can go to, click there, and un unlike some of the other things like the Edge, it's not a secret what your password is. You can go in there, view what it is. Um, you know, as long as you have typed in the master password, you can view all the other passwords and stuff. So even trying to remember what a password is, uh, for other devices or whatever, it's a great way to keep stuff, okay? So I really like it. As you see, it gets lots of recommendations. It's a great thing. And I just use the free one on here, even though they, they do have a uh, multi-price plan. Now, Ghostery, okay? Ghostery, I don't want to say in a negative way, but it really is for someone that's a little bit more paranoid about what their browsers are doing. The ad blockers usually work very well, okay? Um, for most things, um, one of the websites people really want to talk about now is Duck, the DuckDuckGo website. Oh, I just searched Bing for some reason. Anyway, DuckDuckGo.com, it basically is not keeping track of certain things. You can't actually add like a toolbar. I'm not really big on toolbars. Uh, the recently when we did the, and I'll, uh, what is it? It's honey. Uh, uh, honey what? Coupons. The honey coupons app. This is the one that I'm seeing a ton of commercials for lately. And we did talk about it because someone asked me, uh, you know, because they came to class when the class was live, so they got to ask me questions. Asked about the Honey add-on. I did find out that at least in the Mozilla Firefox add-on, um, excuse me, the Mozilla Firefox browser, I can turn it on and off. So I'm sure the one of the reasons why they're giving you such great discounts on here is because they're tracking you. If you don't like that, remember any of the add-ons that you put on these 
uh, computers and stuff you can actually go in and then turn off so I don't have anything installed on this one so that's not a great example but you can turn it off so someone said would you use this and I go yeah I might use this if I say hey I'm gonna do some shopping um, install it but if I used it any other time just do my doing work doing uh, checking email I probably would have it uninstalled or turn it off okay so here you go right there a lot of advertisers for this I haven't really heard anything bad about it and I don't know much about the company but I have been asked because they do a lot of commercials lately DuckDuckGo and we'll talk about our search engines next week uh, so I will include DuckDuckGo when we talk about that that's for someone that is concerned about personal security personal safety um, one of the things is Google basically wants us to push us to be to log in uh, I use uh, Gmail so I'm usually logged in to Google so it does track me um, in that way but I'm okay with that because I am using one of their services so it's probably keeping track of me that way as well what does ghostery do ghostery is something that you install I would say this is for someone we spend a lot of time online every day we use the internet for work shopping sorry I didn't know that was gonna happen so so basically ghostery goes further than just blocking ads and stopping trackers where a lot of the uh, the browsers are doing that now and the ad blocker is doing that as well but I've actually had it where I've used ghostry in the past and it's free ghostry in the past and it basically would break certain websites and they wouldn't load properly so do you realize if you use something a program more extreme than just kind of a general ad blocker it can actually kind of stop the internet from working but this may give us a little uh, more information about that and entertainment to look up information and catch up with loved ones when we do these things online we hope it's a quick and easy experience but it turns out that's rarely the case when you visit a website it's cluttered with ads and trackers trackers are snippets of code that send and receive information about you to other companies trackers use this information to target you with ads analyze your behavior and connect to social media platforms without your knowledge this makes websites slower, cluttered, and less private, which can really impede your browsing experience. But here's the good news. Browsing online doesn't have to be frustrating. With Ghostery, it's cleaner, faster, and safer. Trackers are now easier to see and block. You have the flexibility to block a tracker on the current website you're on, block it on all sites, or even keep the tracker on the site if you prefer. By blocking trackers, pages load faster because you've reduced the clutter on the page. This is why I kind of would recommend this for someone that's more of a um, uh, advanced user because you see it's going into individual things and figuring that out and spending time doing that. We're just a general ad blocker. Website's not working. You turn it off, turn it back on. Okay, so kind of like it said, it can streamline stuff and I kind of uh, displayed how it can block. Uh, the certain things uh, popping up with our ads and can make a website look a lot cleaner than you even realized before okay all right so we've kind of come to the end of our class let's see if you have any other uh, kind of follow-up questions and let me see here if I can think of anything to really add to my uh, newfound information <laughs> uh, Let's see, so I've actually used something with the HTTPS anywhere, and we'll talk more about that next week. Here's the add on. Let's see where it actually put and we'll talk more about that next week but it actually pushes the websites to use HTTPS um, mostly by default but anyway a lot of fun links to look up a lot of information and I'll go ahead and start talking about some of our classes next week and we should be here on YouTube <laughs> We should be here on YouTube, so kind of still the plan is that we actually are posting a link uh, on our, our library's Facebook pages, and then you can follow that link, or you can go to our main main website, 
for our library. Hold on one second, let me pull that up. Okay, well, I'll have that tomorrow. <laughs> so just for now, let's hang out and just check our um, web website, excuse me, our library websites. And let's talk about some of the cl classes we have upcoming as well. So our previous classes are still available on the Facebook Live. Next week, we're gonna be covering Scratch, Intro to Basic Computing, and Coding Animation classes. Also, the Scratch Let's Make a Game. That's a great class, it's a lot of fun. And we're gonna be doing Introduction to Raspberry Pi Computing and Project Ideas. So this is kind of a virtual version. Uh, we actually do have a class that's about physical computing that we do on ground. Of course, we're all staying safe uh, in the home right now. So the big thing about that is I'll be doing uh, talking about that and I also the Raspberry Pi, what to look at, what to buy, different things that you can do with it, project ideas, arcade stuff, uh, media players, and I also talk about different projects you can do as well, making LEDs light, light up and everything. And I actually have a new box that came in the mail today. So I'll do an unboxing there and also got a new box with a whole bunch of new little projects in it. I'm really excited. Motors, all kinds of different things we'll be talking about. Um, and also next week, we'll be talking about gadget help, Q&A, so it's a, a drop by, stop in, ask me questions, and uh, we'll, I'll have answers, hopefully, or we'll search the stuff for it, and it's just a drop in, a virtual drop in. And then on the 30th, we're gonna be doing part three of this class. Uh, at 11 o'clock at uh, Google search and internet safety basics and like I said we'll talk about uh, scams on there and also we're going to be including checking out and finding out what is fake news okay so definitely come join me for that <laughs> Uh, great news, we act, actually, our libraries are actually open. Our new Grovetown library is open. Yay! <laughs> Very exciting. Uh, our libraries have curbside hold pickup. So for more information about that, go to gchrl.org for details or call the library with questions Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Please don't forget to like our Facebook pages and also give this video a like as well. Okay. So hopefully I'll see you guys in the new classes that'll be coming out and come join me this afternoon in our PowerPoint class at 2.30. Like I said, we're posting our videos now here on YouTube uh, channel, but also I'll post the notifications on the Facebook pages as well. So come join me at 2.30 and you guys have a great day. Have a great Thursday and get outside. The weather is nice and hot. Okay. <laughs>
Have a great day. Bye-bye.